So Jake's asking, can you explain final waiver of lien a little further and when that is submitted? Uh, so if, uh, let's say, um, you as the architect or you're a subcontractor and you're part of, uh, uh, let's say your subcontractor, it's probably easier with subcontractor. Uh, you're part of, say, um, uh, five different monthly payouts. So like maybe you're the, the co concrete guy. And so you have uh, done a bunch of work. Uh, that you did excavation, you did some concrete uh, uh, foundations, you did some slabs, you did a bunch of other stuff. Um, eventually you get to the end, the project may keep going. Like there may be a bunch more work that's going to happen. Somebody's going to put roofs on, windows in, all kinds of stuff, but your part of the work is done. So if your part of the work is done and you've gone through these five different uh, monthly draws and, and uh, you've submitted your work that you're ready for it to be paid and then you got paid uh, and you've given a waiver of lien at each one of those monthly draws, then when you got to the end of that, uh, the GC should say to you, okay, you're done, we're all done, our contract is now done. Uh, we have waivers of lien for each of these different amounts that add up to the total contract. Uh, give us a final waiver of lien. And that means that you're essentially saying, okay, we, we got paid all the way through on this thing and, it, and we're now we're now bowing out. We're now saying, we have been paid, we're done, thanks very much, we promise we won't put a lien on your project unless you do some crazy thing to us. Um, so yeah, the final waiver of lien happens at the end, but at the end of whatever that thing you're talking about is. Um, so for the architect, it probably doesn't happen until literally the very, very end. Even though the vast majority of your work was done uh, much, much earlier in the process, uh, you're still working through construction administration all the way until substantial completion and final payouts and all that stuff. So your final waiver of lien probably goes in uh, on the, the final payment, um, the literally last payment. Uh, Dan wanted to know, on number 11, can you advise the owner to test for Avestos, or would you just suggest a possible Avestos title was used? A uh, tile. Or would you just suggest a possible asbestos tile? So would you sort of say, hey, owner, you sh I'm going to advise you to test for asbestos, or would you say, well, it kind of looks like there was an asbestos tile used here? Yeah, that is a really good question, and it actually can start getting very, very specific and, and uh, particular on the wording. But in general, both of those are, are totally reasonable. Um, it's completely reasonable to say, uh, you know, something doesn't look right, uh, you know, I'm not an expert, but um, from what I've seen before, those 9 by 9 tiles, uh, people tell me that those are asbestos, you probably should get uh, uh, an environmental reviewer in here to, uh, to, to, um, to check on this. And then you're essentially saying, look, this is, this is you, you know, we're not responsible for environmental, this is your thing, but, um, you know, from what we know, you know, we've been in the field, this seems like it probably is an issue. Um, you, but it's also totally reasonable to say, uh, it looks like asbestos to me, you know, but I'm not an expert, right? And that should lead the owner all by themselves to decide to do that. So either of those are okay. Um, the main thing here is, um, I have some issues with this because I actually think there's a lot of uh, parts of this where uh, as architects we've managed to sort of um, uh, wuss out on a lot of these kinds of things by um, sort of making sure we have no liability on any of it means that we also don't really get a chance to say a lot about a lot of this stuff. Um, and essentially the way the sort of the standard of the law right now, the way that the AIA and NCARB are expecting you to answer is if it's about um, uh, hazardous materials, uh, you really have no connection to it other than waiting to hear from the owner after they have gotten environmental information uh, from a, a, a licensed environmental uh, contractor who is then going to give a report and in that report it'll say you should uh, encapsulate or you should do this or you should do that um, and then either they will do it or then that information goes into the architectural drawings um, but it goes into the architectural drawings essentially at the uh, at the direction of the owner from through this process of the environmental uh, contractor. And then just to be specific, Ben says, uh, is it okay to, after you've notified the owner, is it okay to mention something to the contractor? Yeah, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't mean to make it say that you, like, you have to be you know, mute about any of this kind of stuff. You can absolutely uh, talk 
to the contractor and say, you know, you might have a conversation saying, look, this seems to me like it's asbestos. What do you think it is? You know, like that's a totally reasonable. And then maybe the two of you go to the owner and say, this looks like asbestos. You really should get uh, this officially taken care of. Um, uh, so it's completely reasonable to have those conversations. Um, you just want to be very, very careful to not take uh, control of those issues. <coughs> um, sorry. Uh, uh, those are a little bit different from uh, safety on the job site. If you, uh, now it's not likely that it would happen this way, but technically, you're on the job site, and you walk along and you say, hey, that elevator pit, you know, that looks dangerous. You should really have a railing there so nobody falls in. Um, and then three months later, <coughs> uh, three months later, a, a wall falls over and kills somebody. Technically, you have taken over the responsibility for the safety on that job site. So that's a much different situation than that uh, environmental one. No, thank you, Mike. Uh, and thanks to all of you who have tuned in. And if you'd like to attend our next ARE live broadcast, visit blackspectacles.com slash podcast to register. Uh, you'll have a chance to ask questions and share your answers with Mike for live feedback during the broadcast, just like today. Um, and to learn more about our AIA ARE prep curriculum, go to blackspectacles.com. Uh, we'll uh, include, a note, uh, include a link in the show notes. Uh, and for those of you who are ready and, and want to go ahead and get busy preparing for the ARE, uh, you can use a coupon, uh, a 15% coupon off the first charge on any AIA ARE prep membership with code 527-1515-WEBINAR. That's 527-15-WEBINAR. Uh, and that'll expire on June 15th. Um, and of course, if you're already an AIA member, you can visit aia.org slash ARE prep to get a 30% discount for the entire duration of your AIA ARE prep membership, not just the first charge. Um, and that also uh, expires on June 15th. Um, and finally, uh, please leave a comment below the video to let us know what you think um, and share any suggestions um, that you may have. I promise uh, we'll read every word that you write and use them to tune our next episodes. Uh, so thanks for watching.